more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Yo, top billing to ya. I right, gang, you know your boy DMV Murph had to come through with this one because I am excited as all get out. My boy, the science experiment himself, jumping Jake Copeland. Formerly of the Florida Gators, right? Shout out to the Florida Gators. Uh, my man, the hacker, Dan Mullen, had this kid for, uh, shit, four seasons. And now he gets a chance to roll with the good guys going to the best area on the planet, the DMV, and working with my Terps and my man, Coach Mike Loxley. Shout out to Coach Mike Loxley. Man, if you ever see this, Coach Loxley, holla at your boy, man. You're the only coach I want to interview up on here. Holla at your boy. I will definitely make that happen for sure. But my man, Coach Loxley, and of course, Coach Enos right there, the tag team, the dream team duo themselves of 2018 Alabama fame. Those boys teaming up, making that offense with my man, Talia Tungo Valoa. I think with the addition of Jacob Copeland, and you take into account Rakim Jarrett, a first-round draft pick, no doubt about that, very much in the mode of a Jamar Chase. And, of course, Dante Demas, right? Shout-outs to Dante Demas. Terrible injury, man. I hate to see that. I don't even want to ever see a replay of that bad boy again. Hopefully he comes back. But even beyond him, uh, hopefully Deshaun Jones comes back. But you got a guy like Marcus Fleming and some other guys on the roster. That could be the very well the very best wide receiver core in the entire country, arguably. Shout-outs to Georgia. That's one of the teams you had to look at there, depending on who stays and who goes there. Georgia going to have some formidable wide receivers. Hey, hey, it probably doesn't even depend on who stays and goes. They're definitely going to have a great wide receiver core. Alabama, of course, uh, going to lose Jamison Williams. Probably John Mechie as well, I would imagine. But, man, they recruited like the Dickens. They had some dudes there. A whole host of people. Ohio State. We'll see what happens replacing the guys, that the first-round guys that they're going to be losing. And Garrett Wilson and uh, Chris Olave. But Jackson Smith and Jigba coming back. And some of those guys that they already had on tow. They have about 10 of them. Marvin Harrison Jr. and all these guys. But arguably speaking, I like what they're doing at the University of Maryland, especially that style of offense. Talia Tungo Valoa spraying that thing all around the yard. I think he's going to be even better than he was this year. Going to be much more comfortable in the second full season of being a starter. I actually had that COVID year where he was injured and and I was an injury COVID or something like that, but he didn't have that many passes. We saw what he could do last year. The guy has a live arm. He just has to work on some of the mechanics of it when he gets – pressured and he's feeling like he has a detached from the pocket there but shit look at this right here if we harken back just to the previous season when the florida gators had kyle trask very similar to what they're doing in college park with coach locks uh we see here uh you're pretty much gonna get vert up the field you're gonna have my man jumping jake right here he's pretty much running a stuggo it looks more more like street ball and this is what i'm saying about talio tungo valoa having to have some dudes who can just go up and get that thing straight up. Dante Demas, we know he can go up and get it. I believe Rakim Jerry can do that, but he's more of a, a ground artist if, if if you catch my drift there. Copeland and Jared are very similar. They both remind me of a Jamar Chase after the catch. However, where the difference is, Copeland is an aerial artist, and he has that groundwork to him, but not as good as Rakim Jared to me. Rakim can go up and get it, but his groundwork is just better to me after the catch than Jacob Copeland. Both can flip each other's style, so they'll complement each other as well there. Uh, you just get uh, pretty much a post route right there, getting vert here. So block and release here by Kyle Pitts. Uh, angle route there by the running back, Damian Pierce there. So similar concepts to what you would see at Maryland. But look at my man go up and get that thing. Look at him. He didn't really think he was going to get the ball. Now look at him have to go and attack it. Uh-uh. Going up and getting it, despite the fact that he's probably six feet tall, six foot one, maybe five eleven and a half or something like that. He plays much bigger than that. Very much like a Steve Smith, Golden Tate, all these guys who are a little bit smaller but can play above the rim. He can go get that bad boy. Actually, let's go check it from a different angle here. See Trask here on the pool. Clean pocket. Just launching that bad boy. And look. Oh, you see that down there? Come on. 
And the defensive back was in perfect position to go up and get that. But it's a 50-50 exchange situation. Jacob Copeland's going to win 90% of the time. So it's not even a 50-50 exchange situation. Look at him. Box out. Body up. Bare hand. Knuckle up. Fitness. Combat in the air. He's going to come down with it. Jacob Copeland, I'm telling you right now. Science experiment. He is that dude. Yo, if you're not already, make sure you subscribe. Especially if you're from the DMV, baby. I definitely got to take care of where my bread is buttered, covering them SEC teams and everything. But I'm trying to build up this DMV, baby, so we can get it cracking like that in the future. Uh, You never know. I got a lot of exciting things planned for teams in the DMV. So whether it be my Hokies, whether it be my Terps, Washington football team, Baltimore Ravens, Georgetown, it don't matter, baby. If you representing out there, make sure you hit that subscribe button and tell a friend to tell a friend. Bristol, Virginia, stand up. Hagerstown, Maryland, stand up for your boy. Fairfax, Arlington, Baltimore, all everybody, man. People out there in the 757 and everything. So we taking over. All right, so right here, this is what I like about Jacob Copeland if we're talking about that after the catch stuff. We're talking about strength and physicality, especially if you're going in the sets like this, these clean sets. I want to see a lot more clean sets from Coach Locks and Coach Enos with Talia because I believe he can get the ball out of his hands quick. But we'll see what the offensive line offensive line is looking at. Going to be losing some guys there, but, hey, you know how they do it. There's some guys coming in, too, to transfer a portal. I've heard some things, baby. But you're going to have stick, stick. Same thing right here from Kyle Pitts, stick. Getting vert up the field right here. My man jumping, Jake Copeland. Uh, they're getting vert on the outside as well, too. But look what happens when he catches this bad boy. And you can see the strength in that yak. See right here. They're running pretty much coverage across the board. Find that void. Look at that. Keep going. Oh, like Pete Diddy was back in the day. Keep going. Come on, man. Look at this man drag half of Maryland's roster. I'm sorry, half of, dragging half of Missouri's roster with him. Definitely won't be dragging Maryland's roster, but check this out right here. Can't get this guy on the ground. Just nasty. Primal instinct. Mm, check it out from this angle right here. A little bit of a cover two. Uh, didn't get enough depth there, but look at him. Continuing to fight. Mad yards after the catch right there. Continuing to drive. Driving Miss Daisy. Driving that ass down the road. Pause. Mm. Love it right there, baby. I know my man, Coach Lots, Coach Burton. Shout out to Coach Zon Burton doing his thing, too. Uh, getting these boys out of the portal or getting this cat out of the portal and doing some good things as well on the recruiting trail, man. I'm loving what I'm seeing, baby. All right, I have a ton of stuff on Jacob Copeland just covering Florida the last three seasons. So I will link uh, a film study, a real proper film study on that. I just want to kind of get this out here and just kind of uh, introduce this cat to the world i really wanted to introduce maryland to the world right here at least the people in my world right there because i think it's a team you should definitely watch out for uh this cat right here rock him jared you'll see right here then with this boundary work working into the boundary got a, a corner route going on right here then you're just gonna have pretty much a delayed slant coming from rock him jared and you can just see the type of speed that this cat has and this yards after catch is just phenomenal see right here 11 personnel Work with the corner, hit that slant, and then look. Out running angles. <laughs> Come on. We got speed like that. This cat is nasty. Five-star cat flipped from LSU on maybe on signing day or the day before signing day or something like that. But, man, this cat is big and physical. About six foot, 205, two, probably be one of them 210, 215 cats when he get in the league. Very much like my dude, DJ Moore. Very much like a DJ Moore. Like, so it's almost like a repeat of having that cat back in College Park, man. I love it. So you want to see some shit that looks like a repeat? Once again, right here, you're trying to work that man coverage. And this is Tariq Castro Fields, who's a very good cornerback uh, out of Penn State. And uh, he has pretty much nothing to offer. Rock him, Jared. Right here, as soon as that foot hit, bang, look at that. Rhythm and timing aspect of Talia Tonga Valoa. Once again, smoking to Castro feels. Gotta love it. One, two, three, hitch. Bang. Look at that. Look at the product placement. And look at my man taking it to the house. Oh, boy. All right, back into the boundary. This time to Dante Demas. You can see my man Talia put lead on targets on this corner route right here. Putting it through a keyhole, right? This one of them virgin holes this man hit. 
Check it out. His ability to be accurate right here. Mm. Right with the sinking underneath coverage. I don't think you guys got to see it on that angle, but check this out right here. Oh, <laughs> come on. Making these dudes two stooges each other. <laughs> you, know, you hit their heads together like the three stooges right there. But look at this. Look at the product placement, putting lead on targets right there to Dante Demas and that crazy catch radius. Come on. When all three of these guys are on the field at the same time, along with some of the other guys that they have, and then the running backs. Matter of fact, look at this. I was expecting a huge breakout year from jumping Jay Copeland. It didn't happen that way. Obviously, a lot of mitigating circumstances. Uh, tumultuous season, no doubt, there with Dan Mullen being fired and not the best quarterback play. But, man, he still managed to get 41 recessions for 642 yards. He'll have better quarterback play. He'll have just as good of offensive coordinating between Loxley and Enos, just like the hacker Dan Mullen. So it should work out there, and he'll be playing with better talent around him. Rakim Jerry here, 56 receptions for 769 yards. He wasn't even really getting it popping like down the field. He's kind of a a tweener type, right? Not necessarily going to get you the 20 yards per catch because he's going to do the dirty work too. So it's going to be hard for him to average like that. He ain't just going down the field. He'll make explosive plays out of nothing. So he's in the all make it from scratch team. Six foot, 200 pounds from Landover. I went to St. John's in D.C. Um, this, I think the world of this cat, man, he's definitely going to be a first round pick in my opinion, the way it should go here. And Dante Demas, man, he was killing it. In one, two, three, four, and five games, not a complete game in the Iowa game, the man had 28 recessions for 507 yards. He was the guy that was getting the ball down the field, your vertical threat right there. Nasty injury, but we've seen worse, and I'm praying to God this kid comes back, a D.C. kid there, but 18 yards per catch there. Talia's got him some dudes with him, man. And speaking of him, my man Talia, Talia right here, 24 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. He did exactly what I wanted to see him do, which, in, which was improve that completion percentage. Went from 62% roughly to 68% completion percentage there. So sky's the limit. Maybe not even the sky. We shall see. Tough as the vision they play in, though, with Penn State, Michigan, and Michigan State, and those guys in Ohio State. So, but ain't nothing to it but to do it, man. They keep recruiting like they're doing and getting the right type of players for the system. That coaching staff with Coach Stewart, the defensive coordinator, and some of the guys they have there. It's a very good coaching staff. We shall see how it works out in the future, but I cannot wait to see it there. Unfortunately, I have a conundrum on my hands there with my Hokies playing with my Terps in this bowl game next week. So not necessarily looking forward to that as far as the outcome, but definitely looking forward to seeing both of these two teams play um, against each other there. Should be a pretty fun matchup to watch there. But hopefully we want to see them play each other again after that. Um, and they can go on about their separate ways. And we can continue to take over the DMV, baby. So once again, man, salute to everybody out there. Make sure you send in that quality support so we can keep this train on the tracks. Uh, if you haven't done so already, and make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend that this is where it's at, man. We'll get that Maryland coverage popping just like my Virginia Tech coverage and some of the other stuff that I did with the NFL coverage. So, all right. But it's your boy Murph, the underground king, the DMV king. I'm in there like swimwear. All right. With that being said, peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top.